are delighted to have you join us today for this webinar. And I hope that you are able to hear us fine without any connection issues. And my name is Allison Eskison, and I'm the Vice President of the MasterCard Center for Inclusive Growth. And we are delighted to have a very distinguished panel today. Um, we have, uh, we have Ms. Um, Sareka Morandi, who was the former Executive Director of RBI. We have Mr. Bhaskar Babu, who is the co-founder and CEO of Suridai, Suridai Small Finance Bank. And not um, certainly uh, last but not least is Ms. Chetna Sinha, who is the founder and chairperson of the Mandeshi Bank and Mandeshi Foundation. And we uh, have sent our uh, Mr. Mustafa, um, Mr. Mohammed Mustafa, who is the labor commissioner and former chair and manager, managing director of SIDBI, sends his regrets. He got called away on an emergency meeting, but we're hoping we might be able to catch him at the tail end of this. So this conversation we are excited to have. And when we were doing our prep beforehand, we, we really talked about how the SANCOP audience is already enlightened. We don't need to convince you about the importance of women entrepreneurs. We don't need to I explain that there are hundreds um, uh, between 15, uh, sorry, between 13 and a half to 16 million women entrepreneurs in India, accounting for about 20% of all businesses. Um, you already know that. We also know that you are very aware that there is the opportunity and potential for women entrepreneurs to create between 150 and 170 million new jobs in India between now and 2030. The importance of women entrepreneurship, the importance of small businesses in general, as the backbone of the Indian economy is something that is so critical. And because you're this enlightened audience, we didn't want to spend today talking about what you already know or trying to persuade you that this is important. Rather, what we wanted to do was to drive the conversation forward. So our goal today is to come out with an actionable uh, list of what we should do together as a community to really support, enable, empower women entrepreneurs, particularly during this hard time of the global pandemic, to really succeed. And so I will not spend a great amount of time um, introducing my panelists because their accomplishments can literally take up the entire hour and they are just so distinguished in their own fields. But rather, we'll start this conversation with a key question to each of them. If, you, if the goal is to drive financial security and economic growth that's equitable and inclusive and with a focus on women entrepreneurs, and you had to choose only two, what would you say are the two most critical challenges that are time sensitive and that we absolutely must address today? And Ms. Rekha, I'll, I'll start with you. Oh, I think you're on mute. Since MSMEs are the backbone of any economy, and that's the way we should grow, I think the single most important uh, factor would be entrepreneurship development centers. Actually, our country had a system of having district industrial centers in districts. But actually, you need this entrepreneurship development centers close to the you know, hubs, economic hubs, close to the, you know, special economic zones so that people will get skilled you know people nearby will get skilled whether it is agricultural activity or industrial activity or services activity actually the edc should be close to the hubs where the economic activity is taking place and number two is i think digitization is very important because now the, all the msmes have to be registered to uh uh, uh udyog Aadhaar, uh, you know, they have to get Udyog Aadhaar certificate and that Udyog Aadhaar, that uh, uh, platform would be integrated with income tax and with GSTM. So basically entrepreneurs would have to have a simple accounting system. They have to have an IT, they have to give their IT returns and they also have to submit GST returns. 
So when the Udyog Aadhaar, I mean, it's on the basis of self declaration that you get registered there, but you have to fill in your IT and you have to fill in your GSTN. So it will require a level of uh, yeah, digitalization which they will not be able to handle. So therefore, you need these entrepreneurship development centers which will help them in the capacity, not only the other capacity building like management and so on, but also in this uh, area. So, Ms. Rekha, so you're saying, one, you need proximity. You need proximity yeah. to where entrepreneurs live and the training and the support to be close yeah. to them. And, and what else would a district industrial um, center do? Is it only training? No, they were supposed to do training, facilitation, everything, you know. They were part of that. And also seeing that uh, the dues were settled uh, in a timely manner. All these things they were supposed, they, they, used to have, they had a panel to settle the dues also of uh, MSMEs whose you know, dues were not being released by the bigger companies. So there was a dispute resolution also with them. So maybe dispute resolution can be at the district level, but at the capacity building level, it has to be closer at the block level, you know. A block mm -hmm. has around 100 uh, villages. You know, a block is a economic, you know, it is an economic zone, you know. So, I mean, the the development center should be near the, where the economic staff, economic zone starts, you know, so that more people can, you know. So, at this district, is too far away for a person to travel from a block. You know, a block That's itself fair. is more than 100 kilometers, you know, sometimes. So to travel to the district headquarters is too, uh, it's too far away for a poor entrepreneur to go and get trained and come back unless he's supported. Absolutely. And I think entrepreneurs may have uh, cash flow problems, but certainly they are time poor, right? If you're a, a, a thriving entrepreneur, your time is as valuable as anything else. And so what I hear you say is there's a challenge around proximity and making certain that you're getting skills and know-how close by. And um, also uh, arbitration and dispute resolution to ensure that small businesses are not taken advantage um, by larger ones. And then certainly the digitization piece. These are all very interesting. Uh, Mr. Bhaskar, are you still with us? Oh, yes, you are. Um, uh, would you like to tell us what your two um, most important challenges that you think we need to solve for are in order to get um, women entrepreneurs to succeed? Thanks, Alison. Uh, I would just take the liberty of making three points, which is really, really key. One, I agree with Ms. Marandi, that's very important is skilling. I would say that we also have probably Chaitanya Madam can really add, uh, once they've kind of picked up an activity and they're into business, asking them to reskill who's almost impossible. The best is to really help them plan. And the other one, which many of them really struggle is in terms of a holistic financial planning, not just credit. I think unfortunately, credit has been the only way in which we have been measuring financial inclusion broadly till now or opening a savings account. If, if you can pull them out in terms of not really them going through the entire learning process, give them a holistic financial package. And uh, the last and the most important, when they want to really try out something, is the market linkages. You teach them to do something, they pick up the business, but they have no idea in terms of what to really sell them. It really comes back to them doing what they were doing earlier, which is two to micro business, which kind of never grow, which is running some vegetable vending stall, which is of a smaller size. These three are really, really important. What we kind of know when we do the funding, which we realize that which has worked well during this period, is that if there is an aggregating mechanism. So we all have made a representation to the MSME saying that, yeah, they will have to be included. We'll have to database them. We'll have to find out. But it will be extremely difficult for them to do the registration of IT or a GSTN. Can we really give the job to the financiers? We'll holistically upload their entire data and give them a card saying that this is your IT number and this is your GSTN number. So the digitization does really help. These three are very, very important. Uh, but last, certainly not in this point, is that they're somewhere not really know how to really put in words. We don't enable them vision, dream. So that's something they kind of you know, can think only that much and the scale is only defined by what they think. So that is something which as a country will have to kind of encourage entrepreneurship. If you go to any household, whether it is low income or middle income, uh, the dream of any child is to get into a job. Nobody ever says that they want to be an entrepreneur. We have to start at the schooling level, secondary school, get skilled, become an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is 
as prestigious or more prestigious than getting into a job. So I will just stop there for now. Thank you. That's very interesting. And I, I so I hear certainly your skilling um, and and the idea of being proactive about it and really planning rather than um, troubleshooting on the backside. Um, certainly holistic financial planning. The government of India has done amazing things around financial inclusion. But to your point, having a bank account, but not using that bank account, not understanding how to optimize the benefits and realize those benefits now needs to be our new goalpost. Now that people have bank accounts, we need to figure out how to help them use it in a way that's both meaningful for them and is productive in terms of helping to grow their, their businesses. So I couldn't agree more with you on that. I think market linkages is also very key as you point out. And I love that you've taken a step back and say vision, right? How do you help um, women entrepreneurs to feel that they not only have dreams, but will put plans into place to realize those dreams. And that skilling piece, um, certainly the financial planning and the market linkages are all very important. I'm going to pivot to uh, Chetna to provide some on the ground thoughts and, and perhaps also a little bit of a response to what Ms. Rekha and Mr. Bhaskar have also said. We'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, are these the right challenges um, as well as the ones that you would prioritize? Thanks, Alison. And um, I'm, I'm really delighted to uh, see this panel with uh, Bhaskar and uh, Surekha Marandi, ma'am. Uh, actually, you know, when I was listening to both, both of them, and then as Alison, you mentioned, I was just thinking like, you know, what are the things which sometimes you are shocked at the grassroots level at the branch? And I would like to narrate uh, one of the story of one of our lady. And uh, this is uh, a Lakshmi in, uh, in Satara district. Uh, she had actually taken a loan of microcredit from Mandeshi Bank three times. Regular repayer, everything repaid in time. And she defaulted and one day she came to the bank and she said that my husband has ran away. My credit score, because of the loan, too much loan. My credit score, she knew huh, that has come down. My receivable rating has come down. Nobody is giving me loan and I am alone. My husband has run away. I cannot run and run away. My children are here. And now what should I do? And our branch managers were like so nervous that what is going to happen with our loan, mm -hmm. right? As usual, it would happen. And then, but I felt that this lady who comes to the bank and tells, <laughs> instead of running away, that this has happened to me. And how should I go forward? I mean, I'm just like, you know, Alison bringing out something very aggressive in this whole atmosphere of like, yes, this is the way you would. And then um, giving this case, but it's not a case. It was just, I felt that this lady who whose business was selling the snacks in the school, she would take her vehicle. Her business was selling the snacks in the different schools and earn. So her cash flows were very vibrant. And so that's why she was always in repayment. And suddenly this happened. And, and then we realized, okay, when she comes here and when she's sharing, what does she need now? And then we thought that why don't we talk of debt counseling also, right? Not just financial literacy, yes, but debt counseling. I do not want to restrict to only credit, but what I'm trying to say is that when we discussed that, then it came that when women start business or a household start business, they want to scale it, their micro businesses. And there are many challenges, challenge of working capital, challenge of marketing, and especially in the rural areas where the markets are not that organized. Everything is quite fragmented and you are entering in a, in a uh, sector where you are now there are no peer pressure. There is not a luxury of small loan. You have entered in a bigger loan. So how do you face this? And have, has anybody prepared us? I mean, as a women entrepreneur, 
no while giving loan did our branch manager think of that no and i feel here when i give this example what i'm trying to say is that yes on demand side there are these issues are there but my my concern is that supply side is not prepared enough and i would just like to say when i say that that even in post pandemic we saw that women were shifting their business so fast you know i am selling vegetables and i am i am i have a shop in near temple temple is closed i go on two wheeler and sell snacks and start my business and gets up on get my marketing on whatsapp business but on supply side i am still struggling with micro credit loan jlg loan how would i create a group there is pandemic and but working capital loan i need all that data supply side is not prepared so i would just say that here i would end and say that i see the challenges a lot well um baskar do you want to respond to that given that you're on the supply side what are the challenges like, do you think that that's a fair a fair point that the supply side's not ready to to really embrace and grow women micro entrepreneurs it is i i do agree with it now yes it is and, and so what what do you think needs to be done to to for the supply side to to get ready very complicated not on the single line answer i think the entire ecosystem somewhere i think you no know, alongside it has really moved up in the last couple of years one certainly what's not possible is that contrary to some of the numbers which we said closer to just the microfinance database alone which has kind of been improved in the last 10 years get us to approximately around unique 30 million cust households so that's around 3 crore uh, and multiply it by 5 which is average household in any uh, low income or middle income household in the country uh, that's around closer to 10% of the indian population okay so skilling them right kind of no much earlier uh, planning them and i think more mostly what we really miss is in terms of their ability to kind of know what they want to entrepreneurship is multi so start with micro which is doing a small thing in and around the locality then that's where it is all everything stops there is not much of uh, supply which comes in even in terms of we all talk about group loans but how long it's like a school people have to move on in life they have to kind of graduate they have to do it so somewhere i think you know the great start it's not really moving forward i think many things we have to align both from a supply as well as from the demand side i think that's a really interesting point right so how do you it, so we've seen incredible success with women self help groups we've seen success around the group lending model and but to your point baskar of you need a graduation and that graduation presumably is to an individual business productive working capital loan or in an ideal world into um growth capital and then from there hopefully to some equity that might come in um or uh, bond issuance is really like as you grow and grow and grow like there's a suite of products um but to chetna's earlier point of the supply side's not ready so if we've seen success with women um micro entrepreneurs and group lending how do you, what what do we need to get them into individual lending is it is it the banks don't have risk appetite is it that the regulatory environment is uh disfavorable is it that you think that yes they might be good borrowers at a group level but their profile doesn't look as good at an individual level like what what do you think is 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 the challenge one from a behavioral point of view or don't fix which is not broken so the, the group model has been kind of scaling scaling quite consistently for the last 10 years i think so general tendency of don't fix which is not really broken probably there's a temptation from the financier side equally important on the assessment side individual assessments do really kind of take quite a bit of an energy and they may not really justify the ticket size so somewhere i think this is where government intervention may be really be required in terms of having a guarantee pool for individual women entrepreneurs and kind of the subsidize so that their landing cost is substantially lower So unfortunately, in a group model, the pricing can be far lower than an individual model. The risks are very different, and half a percent of a credit cost many times goes up to even as high as five to ten percent. But that's at the start. So as the ninety percent of the customers stay good, uh, the credit cost obviously over a period of time will come down. But who pays the ferryman becomes the question. 
So go back and then it kind of you know, goes back till the size goes beyond one, one and a half lakhs. Then it continues to be in terms of the group model, the SAG model or the JLG model, irrespective of the models. So uh, this, I think, is certainly can, uh, we did see that during this phase of pandemic when government came with the ECLG scheme, and we said, hey, it's guaranteed by the government. And the scheme works where they pay only interest for the entire one year, and the interest rate is capped at 9.25%, but guaranteed. So the cost of borrowing for many of the institutions have come down drastically. But can we pass on the only big question there out there is what is your credit cost? Is it going to be 5, 10, and who kind of bears it? So to kind of grow that 90%, which inevitably is good, and 10% for various uh, circumstantial needs, kind of don't really pay the pay in time, we will have to grow that pool much larger. I think here this can't be done by any individual institution. There is an ecosystem which has to be kind of covered. And I do believe that government has a role to play in that, at least in the beginning. Thank you. Mr. Eka, what do you think? I, I know you don't, you're not in the government now, but you um, had such an, a wonderful vantage point having been yeah. um, the head of uh, RBI or the executive director at RBI that we'd love to hear, like, is, is that is that the missing piece here to unlock um, growth of women entrepreneurs? In fact, uh, uh, they need a whole, uh, you know, slew of, uh, you know, uh, interventions. Number one, capital. Capital is one thing that is required for them to grow. And now getting capital itself, I think the government has made a fund of funds. I don't know how far it will be you know, applicable, but that is a way. And then if people can get, you know, the cover, guarantee cover, you know, that and then go to the bank, you know, they should get individually get the guarantee cover and then go to the bank. Maybe the costs, once they have the guarantee, the costs will be, go down and they can go shopping to each bank and ask them, you know, how much, you know, <laughs> so guarantee actually, but, but uh, the, uh, the, what we call infrastructure for guarantee is actually goes to the banks instead of individual customers. You know, mm -hmm. so if if the women entrepreneur could get guarantee on hand and then go to a bank shopping, maybe the cost of funds will be, you know, lower. But to have that to happen, we'll have to change the whole, you know, infrastructure of the way guarantee is being, you know, delivered. Credit guarantee is being delivered. That's very interesting. And so I hear um, from both you and Bhaskar, that there's a cost of capital challenge that makes it difficult to transition from group lending to individual lending for women entrepreneurs. And, and part of that cost of capital, um, I, I think embedded in, in, in Bhaskar's example was the, the cost of customer acquisition or borrower acquisition, that it, it's when you have a group lending model, it's a lot easier than all of a sudden trying to individually reach the same number of, of um, women entrepreneurs. Um, in this both... case, in case uh -huh. I would like to add, in this case, yeah. I would like to add, if, if that Udyog Aadhaar thing, you know, gets operational, then people will able, be able to onboard them, on, onboard the women on Udyog Aadhaar. Once that gets established and it gets linked with your IT and, uh, and the GST. And do you so think that's something that's imminent? Or do you think that that, that goes back that, to the digital that, training centers? That is eminent. The integration is eminent so that people will be enabled to, you know, be discovered. Excellent. And and Chet, now what do you think about that? Once it once it's live, do you believe that it'll come in phases or will it roll out so quickly that the problem oh, simply Adhar disappears? Udyog Aadhaar is already live, but the integration yes. with CBDT and GST is yet to be done. Is yet to so be done. Okay is done, then uh, it'll be easier for banks to discover people. And Chetna, what do you think? Do you think that's going to um, be the catalyst to push us um, from gr a group lending model to an individual uh, graduation? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree with ma'am that, uh, see, the, any entitlements, any, uh, my identity, now, Anyway, we have resolved the EKYC and everything, but Udyog Aadhaar, I am a business woman. That not only gives the proof of my business and myself, but that gives the courage to women, number one, that I am a business woman. Second thing is that gives the identification of her to society 
that she is a business woman, right? That is second, which together makes her entry into this business world. So mm -hmm. I do think that you know it is going to play a very crucial role in that way. Now, second, I would just like to reflect and take it forward as um, Bhaskar was talking about the acquisition of borrowers and all that. I do feel that that becomes easier in the group lending. And also, ma'am is here that um, banking sector in India does this trading in priority sector lending, which becomes easier for me to buy those loans, right? Because it's, it's there. But while doing that, I do think that in the similar way, as ma'am has said, that guarantee, capital, Udyog Aadhaar, these entitlements, all this together, and bringing it some trading of priority sector lending, which if government comes in and is there, I mean, we were, we were thinking Mr. Mustafa would also bring, and ma'am can talk about more on those lines also, that how, because these are the things which, these are additional things where sectors start taking risk, right? It's about the, that I'm ready to take the risk and they take the risk. But on the other side, I would just like to say that in the beginning, I said that the supply side is not ready. Now I will go to other way down. That even demand side needs a lot where, you know, organization like, um, I mean, not just bankers, but the government, uh, the government floated institution because it's very, bankers have been criticized a lot. But the other side I feel is that how do you do the risk sharing with the bank? Because that is, unless if banks are sure that there are some institution, there are some platforms who are going to share the risk of these individual borrowers. Because if you are group, then your peer pressure is there. The risk is not there, right? But when they are individual, they are first time coming, entering into the business no collateral, how the risk is going to be shared. And I think those platform plays very important role. I would just like to give a very, very briefly give a statement that Mandeshi did really uh, worked on this whole individual lending program and Dwara uh, and even Bain and Google together, they are working with us that how do you make the banks comfortable and work on risk sharing? And there are various ways of doing it. Like, you know, I provide a digital marketing uh, place to these new enterprise. And if they can sell their products and, and uh, mandeshiibaza.com, we have just uh, launching it, is a part of a risk sharing. And we, with the help of MAM, and MAM should talk about more of that, that we just did the MOU with State Bank of India, right? Why would State Bank of India do MOU with NGOs? Somewhere they are looking for risk sharing. So I do mm -hmm. think that on demand side, with these women, it is very important those who want to support micro enterprise world and create government, non-profit organizations, civil society organizations. Here, there should be something like, and, and technology companies should come together, create these platform for these borrowers, then the risk sharing will happen and the risk appetite of the bank, banks will come forward to take the risk. So I would just leave to ma'am to talk about that partnership, which actually she was instrumental in it. Sareka, please. Yeah. Uh, actually, the banks are not able to discover entrepreneurs because they are not in the formal financial space. So banks are, you know, uh, they are high, like they are not high touch, they are low touch, you know. So they don't have the field staff to go and discover these small entrepreneurs. So unless, you know, you have, uh, unless these entrepreneurs, how do you make these entrepreneurs visible? So that's one way that you do the capacity building, you get them into registration, you have an accounting, you, you have a revenue stream. And the, on the basis of the revenue stream, the banks will, you know, will be convinced that, you know, yes, they are bankable. So that is why since Mandeshi is, you know, since Mandeshi is already doing the capacity building and also marketing. 
so the banks uh, sbi had uh, uh, they have fi projects so that's how i got them together to have an fi project whether you are you know <laughs> since it's already you know there are a very trained group of women already having doing business already having a revenue stream already having markets you know they are also helping them in marketing so already they are, they are prepared for formal you know formal uh, financial you know inclusion so that's why uh, this uh, project was launched because the bank also wants to lend actually the banks also want to lend to people only thing is they don't have the capacity to find you know such people so with the with the institutions like mandeshi foundation i think if more institutions come in to build the capacity of uh, you know these women entrepreneurs link them to a market in fact the government is also envisaging a you know platform e marketing platform instead of trade fairs they usually have trade fairs you know for rural entrepreneurs so they are also envisaging they are also thinking of having a e, e platform for uh, selling these products of uh, and msmes so that's why i feel uh, that uh, uh, if the uh, ngos like mandeshi foundation come forward and you know sort of tie up with banks i think many women entrepreneurs will be uh, benefited into getting into and once they get into financial the formal system i mean it's automatic provided you do the repayments it's uh, automatic and i think with repayments also they are going to help them to do the repayments so so banks will be willing to lend if they, they get a ready made cohort if they get a ready made cohort nothing like it So you highlight this incredible need, right? Banks want to lend. This is their business, um, and yeah. yet they're they struggle to identify them. Um, Bhaskar, does Suradaya Bank, uh, Small Finance Bank, do you work with nonprofits? Like, how do you source um, new new customers, new women entrepreneurs, and and deem that they're bankable? What's your approach? Unlike Marandi, ma'am, said for the general banks. we kind of no believe in real high touch so over a period of time what the high touch certainly kind of you know, digital makes it far more less expensive uh, affordable so to say to reach out to them so high touch over a period of time will convert itself from meeting in person regularly to probably still kind of you know, being in high touch to the digital means there's a balance which will come in so i mean so since your foot soldiers we are on 4500 of them for a portfolio of less than 4000 crores so that's kind of you no know, on a scale of uh, a regular institution will have 300 times of that so the high touch is really built in where the ecosystem has been somehow we have to celebrate entrepreneurship that as a society while we have so many entrepreneurs we don't really celebrate that we don't feel proud and generally when you take entrepreneurship we kind of you know think about we just to kind of you know quote some names could be narayana murthy could be all of those people but entrepreneurship is not just that that's i think half a percent but the remaining 99% is guy who runs the vada pav stall but runs it world class you don't need to really what are you do entrepreneurship is all about doing what you do in a manner which is the best in class so that i think we'll have to as a government i think where we spend so much financing i think in my view as the country kind of progresses it's the last of the hurdles uh, everybody wants to lend everybody are kind of admires the granularity of lending that will flow i do i am sure marandi ma'am will agree so that has really gone uh, coming from a long way 20 years back when you didn't want to lend to small businesses to really you start really loving that this is the best so what needs to be done is that overall as ecosystem as chetna also was mentioning that we will have to give them the pride that they are an entrepreneur they are contributing to uh, employment of one two three could be within the family could be outside that i think that and financial planning and literacy and above all i think giving them a solid stability just go and do things as we would always succeed so these systems which is beyond just the banking that's i think only plug and play uh, a much smaller piece a critical a significant but a very small piece is financing The rest of it, in my view, is much more important. That's very interesting. And, and Bhaskar, do you have tie-ups with non-profit organizations who can provide some of that skilling and and the building of the capacity of women entrepreneurs? There are very few uh, Mandeshis in the world. So when you want to start, <laughs> all of us, 
the mecca for anybody wanting to start in microfinance or anything related to financial inclusion in Maharashtra or probably other parts is Mandeshi. So before we started, we did this road trip to Mandeshi where we picked up all of that. But there are very, very few such institutions where they kind of you know, come in with a good objective, a slowly kind of you know, transition and they become uh, much worse than probably commercial. So even that I think is a big step. We have to create probably, Maharashtra alone will need probably 300 Mandeshis. So probably like Gramin happened, Chetna Madam will have to take up the responsibility of creating uh, lookalikes of Mandeshis in probably every uh, two to three in every district, if not more. Well, there you hear it, Chetna. Uh, you called out banks and the supply problem and Bhaskar's calling out the problem of not enough Mandeshi. Um, so you'll have to <laughs> figure out a way to respond um, at scale. Um, that's, that's wonderful. I'm going to pause for one moment and encourage our uh, audience to provide questions in the chat. I can see some coming in because I'll very shortly start to transition to audience questions. Um, one last thing for each of you, as you think about the, the challenges that we've heard, so we've heard about market linkages, we've heard about financial planning, um, the need for digitization, um, at market access, um, informality, and also just lack of skill, business acumen skills as, as challenges. And we've also heard some solutions, right? So certainly um, thinking about risk sharing, whether it's through a guarantee or risk sharing in terms of partnerships with nonprofits who can help to mitigate some of that, that knowledge asymmetry. And um, we've also heard about funds of funds to bring down costs. We've heard um, from about district industrial centers as a means, certainly the integration of Adhar and GST as, as one of the um, accelerators for, for moving women entrepreneurs into um, growing businesses. Um, and we've heard a little bit about digital market, marketplaces um, sort of slash trade fairs. What are the other solutions that we haven't yet talked about that you think either are on the horizon and will be coming soon, or somebody hasn't thought of it and we need to we need to start talking about it, whether it's because we don't yet have the perfect solution or or there's an example someplace else that you think we should replicate in India. Chetna, do you wanna give your thoughts on that? Yeah. So first I would say like, you know, um, I mean, Baska, that was a bit uh, getting Man, no, why 300 Mandeshi? I think banks to bank, banks to technology company, we do, do let's explore those partnerships and they are there, right? And, and anyway, thanks so much. But I just would like to uh, tell, uh, I was going to talk about uh, Alison is that what is need coming up or what is on the demand side people are ready with. So one thing which I can see in post pandemic is that women are ready with their businesses on digital as we all know how WhatsApp business is being used, right? But the one thing which was very remarkable for me to see our women, and I always see that, say that they are faster than Mandeshi. Our women are now saying that, no, this is, this reinvent your financial literacy. We want to document and do accounting of our own business. We have multiple businesses. I sell Vada Pau. I also repair mobile. I also do Xeroxing, right? How would I maintain my accounts? And if I am, if the organizations or the tech company helps with that, then their data about their receivables, about their payables, about their working capital, I think if that is available, that data, who will not do the individual lending? Everybody will do. If I know that our women, and if our women are ready with those tools, I, if I have a rating tool, if I myself, I'm not talking about the civil rating, high mark, those companies, they just give you marks, right? But I talk about what is my working capital? What is my net worth? What is my stock? If I am ready with that, why would not bank lend me? I mean, I, I feel that we do not want NGOs to be there here. Why don't we equip our own women entrepreneurs? And that's how, Bhaskar, what you are talking about, celebrating entrepreneurs, right? It is, how do we celebrate entrepreneurs? Give them these different, different tools to them that, yes, 
and make it on the scale so that they are not very expensive. If in five rupees, I mean, I'm talking in rupees in that, you know, women are ready to pay 10 rupees for the accounting app. If you have millions and this country is about billions, so all those things will give additional assets to our women. Yes, they do not have collateral, but if I have all these things, then why would not the capital come in? And I would just last, I would just say that, which Bhaskar did mention about celebrating entrepreneurship. I would like to say that unless we do that, this country will not these get, I mean, talking about debt and equity is much, much far. And it's, it's we want, but that, that will have to be much later, but people will come forward to start the business. So I would just say that rating tools, working capital, all those and technologies available and companies are there. It is coming. I mean, I was just, uh, um, Nandan, the, the founder of Aadhaar, he has just founded this company where you get this data of people who are individual entrepreneurs. Then I think uh, the, the scale will come and we will be able to climb the ladder much faster. Tareka Bhaskar, would you like to respond to Chetna? Uh, of course. Uh, as I already said, that uh, you need to provide these uh, you know, tools to women. And, uh, and the tools will actually enable them to link with the, not only the market, but also the GST, IT, and all that. So it, that's the need of the art. And nowadays, technology is, uh, is available. And, uh, it's, and for them, it's just a simple simple accounting package, not a very, you know, complicated one because their, their businesses are, you know, simple. So that needs to be done to, you know, to improve their, uh, you know, uh, getting into the formal system. So there's a question that, that relates to, um, that, that relates to what we're talking about from the audience. Um, so I'll read it out. In, in what ways can financial institutions use Adag Adhar data once it's linked with GST to provide better access to finance to micro and small enterprises? And perhaps um, interestingly, what kind of safeguards will the government need to put in place to ensure that the consumer's personal data is not misused? And so, as you had talked earlier about the linking is um, imminent, has the government already thought about safeguards to protect consumers' personal data? And, and then for Bhaskar, once it's linked, how will, how will financial institutions um, start to expand access to credit? There is enough of layers which has been put for security on other. So I don't know I have the other numbers uh, given by the customer through e-form, I don't store a single number. We can't. So we do we ask kind of Baskar as an accountant to the bank and has given the other validation, yes. And the bank take out the other number, it's no. So that layering has kind of come out pretty well. It has been masked and we don't really store it at all. It's completely encrypted. Uh, however, as Jetna said, over a period of time, we need to collect data on the customer's behavior to enable them service better. So whereas the other linkage has helped in the EKYC, which obviously took time in terms of the networks available in the villages and so on, today we open account, a OD account of a customer in flat two minutes time. It is not just us. I think everybody kind of into this energy inclusion space probably has a turnover on time, which is faster than I can take a personal loan from another private sector bank. So that has happened purely because of digital. So it's just go put in. And what has also happened is that the, how do I really know that the lady who has got an account is coming and withdrawing money? So again, other really biometric validation does really come into play. What another thing which you like to build as people get digitized just before I coming in, my credit card was hacked and 45,000 rupees was swiped in Dallas, Texas. And I called up the foreign bank where I have the credit card. Before kind of asking him to hot list, I had to go through so many queries while I called up on my mm -hmm. registered mobile number. Can I can you give me the card number? I didn't have the card number with me. One failed transaction of thousand rupees, not crediting to them is all that will take for the lady ever not to really trust digital. So that addressing of that has to be far 
more sensitive for a low value transaction than it can be for a high value transaction. I still will figure it out how to kind of block the card, get my money back from the banker if they are not taken care. But for these customers, when we kind of push them into digital, which they will happily do because they're all on WhatsApp, it will not take much time for them to get into Beam, Paytm, and do it. But one or two such instances, I think Nachetan was also mentioning elsewhere, is all that will take for them to go back and say, I don't trust digital. That is what will add more than the data security at this point of time. I would think that no, that's more important for the low income households and the financial education business. I can't have a call center. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right, right? So one poor experience early on sours the whole um, possibility of digitization being a useful tool. Sareka, um, when you were with RBI, what was RBI's position on, on this? And, and how were you thinking about ensuring that the adoption of digital was a positive experience for, for all micro entrepreneurs, but especially women? Uh, in term, terms of payment, there are a lot of checks in place in, in the terms of the payment uh, and settlement system. So you have OTPs, you have uh, PINs, you have all sorts of things. And even in UPI, actually, you have a PIN and all that. And uh, so there are checks and balances built in, but even if uh, checks and balances are, uh, you know, uh, if there are frauds and all that, that is taken into account and the restitution is done by banks whenever frauds happen. They have a restitution policy and they have to, uh, once that is checked up with actually the MPCI, you know, there they check up whether the fraud has happened or not. They can, make, uh, they can you know, do a check. You know, so once uh, it is reported, it is actually, uh, there are many safeguards for the yeah. Ensuring that the money, you know, doesn't uh, go to the wrong, into the wrong hands. That's very helpful. Chetna, a question from the audience. Um, given your close integration with women entrepreneurs, has the co-origination model worked for Mondeshi's customers? What have been the challenges in getting through to financial um, institutions? So, if this question maybe uh, two, three years back, I would have like, you know, reacted that yes, financial institutions are not giving, they are, they are talking about these, but I myself have learned a lot within Mandeshi when you are, you have two heads, right? You have Mandeshi Bank, Mandeshi Foundation. And we, I, I always see that our bank managers would say, I will not release the loan till I get this, this data. And our foundation uh, mentors will say that this woman, her business is this much and why, why bank is having bias. So I feel very strongly that how does co-origination happen? It does not happen. Uh, it shouldn't happen by any judgment, right? It has to have data. It has to have the facts. It has to have these things. And I find that uh, the civil society organization, NGOs, government, they have that role in that. And women themselves have become much smarter now. That if you make anything available, just think that you, you go in any village, at least in Maharashtra, that lady will know her credit rating. How would she know? At, on a civil rating, because she's part of the group and she knows which means that she's ready for that. And so then it becomes very important that if you want to co-originate loan, if you want these women to get loan, the government, everybody should come forward to equip them. That first thing, as when Baskar mentioned that celebrate entrepreneurship, the quick thing came in my mind is give property rights to women. They will have collateral. And then they will start the business. They'll get the mortgages. They'll get the loans. Because on one side, yes, you give the award and celebrate. But on the other side, some concrete, immediate things are needed. Though these are like long term. But I'm just saying that for originating these loans, the question has come. I feel it is very important that equip your women. Get the confidence. And confidence will come with all these tools. I will rate myself. I will show my stock. This is my stock. These are my receivable. These are my payments. And this is possible 
like this. I mean, maybe collateral may come later, but if women have smartphones, they will have everything about their business on this, and then that can work more like a collateral. So I feel that the everything, I mean, we are redefining everything, and our women are redefining. When they are now talking about entitlements and all, and here, just yesterday, one of our women, she had a goat doctor was dealing with her goat. This is a lady who is rearing goat in the field, and she was telling her husband, "You won't be able to handle the WhatsApp quite very well. Give me the phone, and I will." Do. You know, we are changing the whole definition and whole pedagogy of the education. So I think. Uh, it's a co-origination, everything. We just have to be more prepared. That's wonderful. And uh, I have one more question from the audience and then we'll start to wrap up. Um, so uh, this question is, are there any specific loan product category, categories for micro entrepreneurs? Many of these micro enterprises are sole proprietorships wherein the liability is on the individual. Since there is no legal entity as a sole proprietor, is there a scope for development of a separate product category? This sounds like it's a policy or enabling environment question. Sureka, do you have uh, or any initial thoughts? Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, but uh, that is why the Udyog Aadhaar has been created, so that people will get that URC registration, you know. Uh, about uh, they may be proprietorship, they may be partnerships. It doesn't matter. It's uh, that registration is for declaring that you are an MSN. So if uh, you know, so if uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you are a proprietorship or a partnership. It's and it's, the, it's your whatever you are doing. You know what you are doing is that that is more important than your. your constitution of your company, that you are an MSME. And that MSME is defined only by uh, by your plant and machinery, investment in plant and machinery, and turnover. The turnover has been added. So if your turnover is below a certain, uh, up to certain amount, then you are micro, then above that amount you are small, and above that you are medium. You know? So I think the uh, these things have changed recently. The threshold has changed recently. Bhaskar, I think you'd be able to tell about uh, the recent thresholds for micro, small, and medium. Quite a bit has changed, ma'am. So now, till one crore and ten crore of five crore of turnover, it's micro. So much, much diff uh, vaster than it was earlier. But wh wh while the government's intent is to really formalize the entire economy, bankers are all struggling. They're saying that. It's become, it'll become extremely difficult for them because as Setna also will know, is that they don't really kind of you know, keep such a hard tab on the turnover to report for IT or a GST mm. purpose. So we kind of are in dialogue. We are saying that, okay, we will kind of enable the government to do a formalization of the economy, which is really, really needed. In the medium term, long term, it will be very beneficial. In the short term, to kind of get away from all the difficulties that they will do it, can we really act, act as an enabler and an aggregator? Create the number, as Shetna was saying. Just give them this Udyagadar number, Udyog Mitra is called probably. Is that give them the number and say that now I am an entrepreneur in my own right. And once they have it and other data as it flows in, more faster than the turnover data, what can flow in as things get digital. India is far, far behind, like compared to China, where the government is saying you'll have to accept cash because of legal tender. So it has gone to that extreme in terms of digitization. So here, the moment that happens even marginally, 30% of the turnover comes through the banking system or the digital system. A cash flow lending will really scale that we have thought never thought about. So probably mm -hmm. it'll be 20 times more. And that is when you will see lots of innovation. If there's a daily turnover and the turnover is between 6 in the evening to 10 o'clock in the evening and peaks up during Dampati, then the, we will ask no questions. The banks will come out with fabulous products. So those days are gone when banks will shy away from lending to small businesses to today you're embracing them except that you're struggling in terms of not putting a proper ecosystem. So I would guess that it's just a, I would not know whether it's a quarter, a couple of quarters away, but certainly not more than a couple of years away for sure. That That's wonderful. And we are getting close to the end and we have so many more questions in the chat and I'm afraid we're just running out of time. And um, I'd like to 
I'm going to ask you each to give one key takeaway message that you think is the call to action for, for this audience. Um, and so if you can start to think about that um, as I summarize. So today we've heard some really interesting things around what are the key challenges that face women entrepreneurs and how we're thinking about solving them. So we talked a lot about skills and the need for capacity building. Um, Ms. Rekha had mentioned district industrial centers as a means of having close proximity to those entrepreneurs who are often time poor and sometimes cash flow poor as well, and therefore need to have skills, um, capacity building or skills development near their, their uh, locations, their business locations. We also talked about the challenges around marketing and uh, market access. And the uh, interesting innovations around creating digital marketplaces where you're able to start to track uh, sales. Um, as Bas Bhaskar just pointed out, the, with increased usage of digital and digital transactions, you start to have more data points, whether that's through a marketplace or through um, simply uh, cash flow or, or business transactions. But as you start to do that, you have more data points that then enable uh, financial institutions to better assess the risk and to start to increase their lending um, or, or and quite frankly, just any sort of product development that's better tailored for women entrepreneurs. Um, Chetna rightly pointed, pulled up her phone and showed how that is one um, key innovation that is revolutionizing the way that women entrepreneurs currently operate their businesses, but also link to the bigger world, both through their supply chain, their customers, um, as well as in the future, hopefully their bankers. And so that's an innovation that's incredibly valuable. Some places where it sounds, oh, and then, sorry, the other pieces that we talked quite a bit about were the importance of risk sharing risk sharing through government um, guarantees possibly, risk sharing through inform uh, bridging information as asymmetries with um, nonprofits, um, and also bringing the cost of capital down through funds of funds. The one piece where it feels like we talked about the need, but we didn't yet arrive at a solution is the importance of empowering women to have voice and be agents of their own change um, and how valuable that is to recognize and celebrate entrepreneurs um, and how that is when that becomes commonplace in India that you'll see this incredible unleashing of, of true economic potential realized. And so that might be a place where we start to think about how, how and what do we do together in order to do that. I'm gonna give you the last couple minutes um, to give us your key takeaway. And I'll start um, with you, Ms. Sreka. Yeah, I think uh, uh, already Chetna has developed a Chambers of Commerce for her women entrepreneurs. I think that needs to go pan India. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Chetna, please. Ma'am is going to chair that Chambers of Commerce that India <laughs> and Bhaskar is mentoring us. But I would just say that that Chamber of Commerce has to do one thing, and that is ease of business in this country. And that is because if it is not ease, our women entrepreneurs will not be able to do it. So if I want, like, create those platforms, make it easy for women, these chambers of commerce, women will drive themselves. Thank you. And Bhaskar, as our minority representative, as the only uh -huh. male on our panel, uh -huh. <laughs> you have the last word. <laughs> and with that, we will close. Please, over to you. Yeah, my takeaway is that I think the collaboration is the way to go. If I were to really put a meaningful whole thing into it, like we have now the street vendor program running where the government says, you'll have to have 50 lakh street vendors finance. But the beauty of that is that they're saying, even if you don't have a vending license, you apply, you kind of get your letter of recommendation, you do it. Some kind of a holistic linkage. For a moment, we say that we are going to create three crore model, small, micro, entrepreneurs. So we'll have to take that role. And with the way in which some of the government initiatives being run now, I would guess that it will not be more than a year that you put a number. Without a number, we'll try out multiple things which are 
not necessarily highly scalable. They will have high impact, but medium scale or low scale. But if you have to in a country like ours, what's really important is probably a medium scale impact, but a high scale. Uh, can we really have two and a half crore entrepreneurs coming in with this one, two, three, four, five? And that the government will enable. And as Chetna rightly said, we have to acknowledge the ease of doing business has to be what you showed in the machine, which is a smartphone. Click everything. You are becoming, you get yourself registered. You get to have everything done. And no cop, nobody ever can come and disturb your business. Give them that protection that the government can kind of ensure at every level and create your first set of two core micro, small model entrepreneurs. The two core will spring up multi times of that in years to come. So can we really take that and do it? I think if I were to kind of say one thing, I would really, really wish and dream and die for that. Thank you so much. Um, I know we've gone over time, but I appreciate all the comments and the lively engagement. And we really look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you all for joining.